Hey guys, so we're just going to continue with balancing and I'm going to show you um, a very small difference that happens when they tell you that the redox reaction is occurring in basic conditions. Um, really, there's one extra step, um, which is number six down here, but we'll just get to that as we go through this. Um, so the first thing I want to do is figure out like what's oxidized and what's reduced. Um, so if I ignore like the hydrogens and the oxygens, um, I have chromium here with a plus three charge. Um, and on this side, it has a plus six charge. Okay. I have chlorine here that has a plus five charge. And over here, it has a negative one charge. Um, so I could see that chromium was oxidized. Its oxidation state went up and chlorine was reduced. Its oxidation state went down. So I'm going to go ahead and do my oxidation half reaction first. I'm going to have, um, I'm going to leave some room here, chromium with a plus three charge changing to, now when you have a polyatomic, you have to just write the whole polyatomic. You don't want to leave chromium out. Okay. And for my reduction half reaction, I'm going to just leave myself some space. That's a plus sign right there. Um, I have chlorine and a polyatomic, so I'm going to write the whole thing there. And on the other side, I have chlorine by itself. Okay. So let's go from here. If I look, um, if I look at my chromium oxidation reaction, um, I have one chromium on each side, so that's good. The next thing I want to do is balance oxygen. I have four oxygens on the right side, so I need to add water to the left side to balance that out. So if I put four H2Os here, I'm now going to have four oxygens on the left side, so that's good. Um, now I went ahead and I introduced hydrogen to this reaction. So if I have eight hydrogens here on the left side, I need to add eight hydrogen ions to the right side to balance that out. Okay, so now this is where um, we added a step. Wherever you have hydrogen ions, you need to add hydroxide ions to cancel that out. So I actually have eight hydroxide ions that I need to add over here and eight hydroxide ions that I need to add over here. Okay, now what happens is these eight hydrogens and hydroxide ions on this right side, when you put together H and OH, you make water. So it's like I have eight waters on the right side and four waters on the left side. Now, when you have the same thing on both sides of the arrow, they can cancel each other out. So these four waters are going to get canceled out, and these eight waters are going to change into four waters. Okay. Um, so now, um, the last thing I'm going to do is the same as if I was in acidic conditions. I would be um, adding electrons. In the oxidation half reaction, the electrons go on the right side, and I just need to figure out how many electrons I'm adding. So on the left, I have a plus 3 and a minus 8, so that's a minus 5 I have on the left side. And on the right side, I have a minus 2. So I need to get from minus 5 to minus 2, and I would do that by losing three electrons. Okay, so my oxidation half reaction is all done. All right, let's go to reduction. Same thing, I have one chlorine on each side, so that's all good. Um, how do I balance my oxygens? If I have three oxygens on the left, I need to put three waters on the right. So now that balances out oxygen. Um, now that I have six hydrogens on the right, I need to put six hydrogens on the left, okay? So because this is in basic conditions, wherever I add hydrogen ions, I need to also add hydroxide ions to make water. That means that those hydroxide ions have to go um, on both sides, okay? So now here I have six H's and six OH's, so I made six waters. 
So these three waters on the right side are going to get canceled out. And three of these six waters are going to get canceled out, which is going to leave me with three waters on the left. So same thing I did in the oxidation half reaction. Okay, so now all of my elements should balance out. And yep, so now I just need to go ahead and add my electrons. Because this is a reduction half reaction, the electrons should go in the beginning on the left side. So I have negative 1 on the left side, and I have a negative 7 on the right side. So I have to get from negative 1 to negative 7. How many electrons do I have to gain? I have to gain 6 electrons. Okay, so now, um, now I'm almost done. My number of electrons lost and gained have to be equal to each other. And if they're not, you have to make them equal. So I'm going to take this whole reaction that I just wrote here, and what do I have to multiply it by to make 3 equal to 6? I have to multiply it by 2. So basically, I'm just going to double everything. So because I don't have a lot of room here, I'm just going to kind of go in and um, let me make my eraser small. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just erase what I don't need. So these waters got canceled out. Um, if I'm multiplying this by 2, then this is going to turn into 2 chromiums. If I'm multiplying the hydroxides by 2, then that 8 is going to turn into 16 hydroxides. Um, there's going to be 2 in front of this. Um, this was completely canceled out, so I'm just going to get rid of it so it doesn't look messy. Um, instead of 4 waters, I'm going to have 8 waters. And instead of 3 electrons, I'm going to have 6. Okay, so this whole side should go together, guys. There's just kind of a space there. Okay. So now I can go ahead and I can take these two reactions and I can put them back together. Um, the six electrons on each side are going to cancel each other out. Um, if I have three waters on this side, they can cancel out three of these eight waters. So I'm going to be left with five on this side. Um, let's see, chromiums don't cancel anything out. Um, hydroxides. I have six hydroxides here on the right. So they can cancel out six of these hydroxides up here, leaving us with only 10. So now that I canceled everything out, you just want to take your two reactions and you want to put them back together. So I have two Cr plus threes plus 10 hydroxides um, plus a ClO3 minus. And that's everything on the left. On the right side, I have two CrO4 minus twos. I have five waters up there. And I have a Cl minus. Okay. So guys, just to make sure that um, you didn't make any state mistakes, you want to go in and just count up your atoms and make sure they're the same on both sides. I have two chromiums on each side. Um, I have 10 oxygens plus the 3 in the ClO3, so that's 13. I have 8 plus 5 is 13 oxygens on the right, so that's good. I have 10 hydrogens, 10 hydrogens, 1 Cl, 1 Cl. Okay, so everything balanced out. So I'm going to give you guys a question in your Ed Puzzle. You can give that a try. Okay. Um, this next part, guys, is using Table J. Um, we've been talking about redox reactions. Table J helps us to decide if a redox reaction is going to be spontaneous or not. Spontaneous means it's going to occur naturally. It doesn't have to be forced. So when you have two metals in a reaction, um, both of them can't get oxidized. One has to get oxidized and one has to get reduced. So Table J tells you how that's supposed to happen. The higher, more active metal on table J should be the thing that gets oxidized. That's how you would know a reaction is spontaneous. 
opposite, if you have two nonmetals in the reaction, both of them can't get reduced. Something has to lose electrons, even though nonmetals don't want to lose. So how it works is the higher of the nonmetals should be the thing that gets reduced, and the lower one should get oxidized. And if that happens, the reaction is spontaneous. So let's take a look at some examples. Um, when you have to decide if these two things will react, if it will be spontaneous or not. Now, um, you can either turn into an ion or turn into an atom. So K is already an atom, so the only place it can go from there is turn into an ion. Since it's in group 1, it has a plus 1 charge. Nickel is an ion, nickel plus 2. So it can't turn into a different ion at this point. The only thing it can do is turn back into an atom. So if I take a look at what happened, this oxidation state went up, so that got oxidized. This oxidation state went down, so that got reduced. Now if I go to table J and find potassium, which is up here, and nickel, which is down here, potassium is the higher metal, so it should have gotten oxidized. And it did get oxidized. So if it follows the rules on table J, it's spontaneous. Okay, let's try this one. So cobalt, it's an atom. The only thing it can do is become an ion. Aluminum is an ion. The only thing it can do is become an atom. What happened to cobalt? It got oxidized. What happened to aluminum? It got reduced. So now let's go find them on our table. Um, aluminum is up here and cobalt is down here. Which one of these things should have gotten oxidized? Aluminum. And it didn't. So this is the opposite of what Table J said should happen. So this would be not spontaneous. This reaction would only be able to happen if it was forced. Okay? All right, so these next ones look a little different, guys. Um, when they give you an element and a compound, they're basically telling you that you want to do a single replacement reaction. So if I mixed PB with HCl, PB would kick H out of the compound and join Cl, and H would end up by itself. So PB got oxidized, and H, sorry, H got reduced. If I look at those on table J, should PB have gotten oxidized, sorry guys, and H have gotten reduced? Yes. So that would be spontaneous. I want you guys to try the next one, next one on your own. Um, for the last two, notice that these reactions have two nonmetals in them instead of two metals. So for these, we need to actually look at the right side of table J. We want to look for the higher nonmetal being reduced and the lower one being oxidized. That would be spontaneous. So here, Fluorine went from 0 to negative 1, and bromine went from negative 1 to 0. Fluorine got reduced, and bromine got oxidized. If I look at table J, fluorine is on top, bromine is on the bottom. Should fluorine have gotten reduced? Yes, it should have. The top nonmetal should get reduced, so if it follows the rules, it is spontaneous. And I'm going to have you guys try the next one on your own. Okay? Thank you.